No one's watching me yet. What's the point? The point is he can watch this later on. Oh my lord. Oh my lord. Yeah, okay, I can. Okay, this is weird, but huh? I'm gonna try and do a uh unwrapping one o one in max um and yes, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> this is awkward as hell. I've never done this before. Never recorded or anything, but yeah, we're just gonna see how it goes. Um, haven't really thought about anything I need to say in particular, but we'll just roll with it as it goes. Um, I have like two simple shapes here just to give an idea of uh, like where to start. Um, yeah, you'll need to make an editable poly, um, and just the best way to start unwrapping is always with a checker board like this, because these squares need to be square, because if they're not, then that means that your texture will be distorted, and end up being stretched um bad unwrapping uh, see if I can find some pictures hmm. This isn't easy to find. Um, yeah, basically your texture will look like this man's face. Quite warped and uh, distorted. And basically not what you want. Um, especially when it comes to making seamless textures and things that look a bit like this. Or, this is a better example, because if the flowers are distorted, they're not going to look like flowers, obviously. Um, so, yeah, the checkerboard just allows you to see the distortion. But usually, yeah, the, the cube comes out uh, pretty well unwrapped already. Um, the reason for that is just because you make a cube exactly three by three by three centimeters for example each side is going to be exactly square and that matches the uh, one by one space within here within the unwrap editor um, and yeah you can see the the polygons come out every time um, square and obviously on here you can see when I move this square, when I move the polygon, the texture moves. And that's because from like zero, which is this bottom left corner to one, which is the bottom right, is all the space within this texture, um, within the texture space. I've never really thought about what this area is called, but it's, it is the space that the polygon will use to ap apply whatever you, your texture in so whether you need to like shrink it down to match like a piece of grass that's down here on your texture sheet or whatever 
um, that's how it works. But yeah, you can see here, like, I can stretch the um, the polygon in the in the editor so that it's it's squashed like flat or tall, and that will distort the the way the texture applies on the actual model. Um, this is a this is kind of like how your mesh might unwrap if you've been editing it um like adding more polygons and taking it from a cube into something else like like if you're modeling a tv or this is like this is um slightly to be this is how your mesh will look when it's unwrapped i hope this is uh, recording the sound. Should be. But, um, yeah. Because <laughs> if not, then this is all big waste. <laughs> I mean, recording me. Uh, now let's go on to this cylinder. Being as we're talking about distortion. What? <laughs> Yeah, I'm a lecturer now. University quality. Um, no, I said he'll watch the video later. Uh, hang on. So yeah, we, the cylinder just add editable poly. You can obviously unwrap straight onto the cylinder properties. But for the most part, you'll have gone through the edit poly uh, process. Potentially, like change the mesh to what you want. Um, adding the uh, checkerboard on, like again, and you can see that the the squares are not square on here. Um, that's potentially because I've either washed or stretched it using the scale. Uh, tool or done all the edit poly stuff but you can also see if you come into the unwrap editor that the currently this polygon within here if you follow my cursor um, is actually being stretched way up between like the zero down here and then the one up here so a bit like when we stretched and squashed the polygons over on the cube. Um, it's just doing the same thing again. Um, and you can manually squash this yourself to, to bring it uh, so that it's not distorted. Um, but I'll kind of go over a better way of doing that in a bit to do with like the projection settings and all of that um, you can see here like this is kind of like some really obvious kind of stuff but if you use the um, select by element tool it will select the whole uh, it will select the whole object and it will also distort whatever's on top so like in the with the cylinder it's obviously relevant because we have a face on the top and the bottom um but you can easily fix that by um selecting the top or the bottom or whichever faces are distorted um and basically you can use this quick planar map um now is a good time to explain what this square here is um it may be obvious if you uh, unwrapped a bit before but basically this square the yellow square within the viewport um is your one to zero space uh, within the unwrap editor and so basically whatever this uh, whatever the projection sees is what will be projected into the 2D view um, and then you can manipulate it in here 
um, and it's how you it's how you get the best um, on like consistency to make sure you've got accurate 2D versions of what you have in the 3D view. Um, the most relevant kind of like example of that is on a on a cube or on any kind of flat surface. Um, you can see that it's direct, and well, another thing that's relevant is this line that's sticking out here. Um, you can think of that as the direction the the projection is going to hit. So it's like taking a photograph right from here. Um, you can see how that changes as you as you select more polygons around uh, the mesh. It's quite easy to show this on a cylinder because the the polygons are curving around to create the circular like shape. But then if you if you've got these like five polygons here selected, you can see that the projection's like cutting in into the mesh, which means that when you press quick planar um, it will be very subtle in here, but both of these two edge, uh, sorry, both of these two end polygons here will be ever so slightly narrower, which means that you can see here like the squares are getting wider, which means distortion's happening in comparison to the middle one, which was basically um, like head on into the projection so it was perfect um but these two outer ones are like becoming distorted um this is another thing you should be careful of but you can quite easily fix um i didn't mean to segue into this but it kind of uh flows quite well into the relax tool um, the relax tool can be used on pretty much anything. Um, it's mainly used for like organic shapes, things like um, when you're unwrapping faces or let me just show you. Um, so here you can see I do hate this new Google image viewer thing, but you can see, so this head is obviously not a square or a cube, something as simple as we're unwrapping right now, but the relax tool allows you to um, relax the unwrap. This is like really complex and we'll get into this a bit later on. Yes, but I don't really model characters, so I can't much for it um but the relax tool would just allow it's like a computer generated thing that allows them the unwrap on the 2d to stretch into what the computer considers the most accurate representation of the 3d model um but it can also work on odd surface or more simple objects like this cylinder but before I do that for just arguments sake I'm gonna um, planar unwrap these just to get some like extreme examples of of the uh, of this distortion happening um, I'll bring this in here and then when you use the relax tool um, I think there are different uses for these two other settings here but in the like four or five years I've used max I've never needed to use them just use polygon angles and yeah I just kind of did it without saying go but uh, you can basically just start relax 
um like i said the computer will kind of take what you had in this uv island and relax it to the best it can to to um like relieve the distortion on the on the texture um these like other values in here like amount and stretch they are relevant um sometimes i find um if i was to unwrap this whole thing all the way around here and the amount and stretch values are relevant to making uh, it, this is quite hard to explain without having something to really show um let me and I just make something that's gonna show this better um I'm just gonna make a cuboid but with a bend modifier and basically just like whack this round that so mm, with this I don't know, we'll see. We'll see whether this works. The example but mm. Gosh. Yeah, control C doesn't uh, I'm gonna duplicate the bend. Come on. Perfect. Yeah, I kind of want to get some uh, like weird. Yeah, this kind of like two-way bend. I don't really know, but it's a. Uh, it's creating like double the polygons are basically starting to stretch in both like x and y if that makes sense um so you can come in and um you can see how the meshes of the unwrapped really distorted from where the cube started off but you can Basically, I'm selecting like these end faces on here and I'm planar, quick planaring them. And I've got this like arc. And in some cases, uh, relax will do it. Uh, it's kind of done it good here, but just for like argument's sake, you can. It's not going to do anything now, is it? Um, you can basically use these values to help strip, help, it's like amplifying the relax modifier to um, go from what the computer suggests, which is like its default settings, to like doing it like times two or times three. And in some cases, you'll need that to get the unwrap in the 2D view to relax and uh, fit better and kind of like represent the shape more from where you started off with the planar uh, unwrap but that's kind of like a bit more advanced and you kind of come across those situations um, as you go you know like a lot of the unwrapping techniques it's hard to give exact examples for because you'll have to come across um different problems and problem solve them like yourself to learn how to do things differently so um potentially a good thing to go over now would be the stitching tools uh, so we kind of like covered how to get these polygons here into 
what would be like an acceptable amount of representation inside the 2D view. Um, I'm just gonna like quick planar a few of these just to start showing you how to uh, stitch things together. Stitching is relevant to make sure that things like this don't happen. So another reason the checkerboard is good is it shows you where things are aligning. Um, and if you have like things that are way off or even sometimes like rotated, you're going to start getting weird seams, um, which can sometimes be noticeable in video games. And it's kind of like fun to hunt for them and see where the real game artists like cheat and whatever or get away with stuff but basically you don't want this if you can help it in some situations on far more complicated meshes than just a cylinder you will need to you need to do this but again like you'll come across these in your own time on whatever project you're doing um, I'm just going to get water. Okay, well, <laughs> how long is this going to take? I don't know, like a full hour. Oh. Um, so, apart from stitching because of texture seams, normal maps also kind of like require you to use correct stitching to avoid seams within normal maps. <laughs> so regardless of whether the texture is actually pixelated, like the color itself is pixelated and creating a weird scene, um, normal maps when baking like a high poly down to a low poly will also cause horrible baking problems. Uh, and you wanna make sure that you're uh, like kind of following your smoothing groups as well as making sure that uh, your seams don't end up sticking out like a sore thumb but regardless of all of those things you should be worried about I guess um, stitching things together is super super easy and is very fast when you know how to do do it like properly um so you need to use like the edge tool usually you can also weld vertices within the uh, yeah we'll start with vertices so you can actually just weld these two like right together so if you just select them and then come down here to uh select welded or sel weld selected i mean you might have to bump the threshold a bit just like you would in the actual edit poly but you can see they just came together like the beatles song uh, and you can do the same down here but you'll see that again like that kind of like stretch these polygons that you just unwrapped ever so slightly um, and it's not always the best way um, there will be certain situations where you need to weld things, but um, moving on. Oh, also you can target weld, which is like the next best thing. Um, you can literally just drag this 
this vert onto that vert and it welds and the same there and now obviously when uh, when the edges within the editor are green that means that's the edge of the island the island is this is this bunch of polygons here and this is its own what uh, and this is its own island and then the top is its own island and so on and so on but uh, right but then when you weld them or join them together the interior lines will become edges will become white and that means it's stitched or welded correctly so going back to stitching kind of like correctly um here are the stitch tools the one i use the most and find the most useful all the time is stitch custom these ones have different actions uh stitch to average is kind of like kind of an obvious one so that um it will whatever yeah another good thing to point out is whatever you select the next or whatever edges short blue are the things that will are joining to it in the 3d view um and it makes it a hell, of, a hell of a lot easier when you have say several objects you're unwrapping in here or packing and then you need to know what's going to attach because a lot of these will begin to look the same the island so the blue is very useful but you can see if you select one and you press stitch to average it will just take the distance between those two and uh, weld it right in the middle this might be more obvious if um, I like move this up here and then do average and you can see it kind of like it bent these two polygons into place to do what you just asked it to do um, <coughs> which, which for what we want which is a straight unwrap is not very useful um <coughs> i'll leave these where they are but the next one is like stitch to source so it, instead of averaging it out it's just like dragging the next polygon along to it which is also not very useful but stitch custom is probably the best um and yeah you'll need to like click and hold this little one to grab the men the options <coughs> basically it has like these two uh, checker boxes which I don't ever touch but the bias is to do with scale um, and so if I cancel this and just for example make this one small so right now you can see the in the in the actual 3D the left hand side is bigger than the right and so they're not correctly scaled they're using two different densities of pixel but you can fix that by selecting the edge you want and then do custom and right now the bias is 50% so it's kind of like averaging the two out but if you do a hunt yeah, if you do zero that's how i do it it will basically bring the other the one that you're stitching to to the same size and scale of it just brings them to the same scale basically um and it's like the best stitching tool that i well it's kind of like the only one but um it's the easiest way to go around fixing up all of these so you could go and stitch and once you've set those settings in here uh, within this particular unwrap modifier it will stay the same so you can just click that click the button every time and it will um, continue doing the same thing same process over and over 
now obviously here you've got like to the the red and then the blue is on the other end of the unwrap island um and that means you've gone around the whole thing the whole s uh cylinder and yeah they now meet but the only way to get this to meet correctly would be to let me just get rid of this um is to basically squash it down and fit it within the one to zero or zero to one i'm just going to do it like roughly but you can see now that they match up and if you um if you scale up on or down the seam breaks under and this is relevant to when you have a seamless texture um but that all depends on the way your the the way your texture in this particular asset um but yeah just talking about unwrapping right now, right now <laughs> i don't know i'm just kind of rambling and making it up um the next things that are quite relevant and can be very very useful to making sure that things are aligned properly um something that Vlad was talking about uh and you'll know what i'm kind of like what i'm referring to hopefully are these quick transform buttons up here uh up here <laughs> i'll just break one of these off to show you but so uh, this could be any polygon doesn't matter i'm just showing you the tools um so basically right now i just quick plane on this so it's a representation of how it looks in the uh in the 3d and you can use these rotate and yeah you might have to shake the uh, 3d view to make it update on these tools but this is just a super fast way of getting around having to use the, the age-old like rotate tool uh cool tip you can still use the snap tools in in the unwrapping which makes it a lot faster as well um but again you can just like whack these around with the rotate and uh yeah i don't know where to give an example to use this but i don't know you'll know when to use it another thing is sometimes Sometimes you unwrap something that's really long and use the quick planar and it'll come out warped and distorted and for example uh, I'm just going to mash this up a bit just to show what I mean so say you use the quick planar tool down here to unwrap whatever it is and the result of it basically looks a bit like this um the bad thing about this is not only you can't run text or something for example like directly across this because it will come out all skewed and warped um your pixel the way the pixels are aligning onto this is pretty gross you can kind of see it in the way that uh my computer is rendering the viewport right now you can see this like jaggedy edge uh which is just to do with pixel density you can see here it looks a bit better because it's a more like dense and angled line but your texture will also have this in it um, if you're not careful so it's best to make sure that they're running directly along the, the pixel and then you're going to avoid any of this jaggy I, I believe it's called like anti-aliasing it's a bit like or aliasing 
it's the thing it's that setting in games where it takes all the jaggedy edges and smooths them out that's what anti-aliasing is but this is aliasing um but anyway the point of this example is to show you what these two little tools here do um which is an align both vertically and horizontally and so to get this straight without you having to use the scale tool or whatever you can just come and select this and go like bam and it's now straight um on a horizontal and you can do the same to this and voila um you can also to save you a load of time you can also actually come down here hold and select this and then do this which is like two versions of the same thing and so it will do both of them at the same time whereas if you come back onto the first option um, you can basically say that this little these little pluses down here or or this pivot and so when you crunch this down it'll it will go straight onto the pivot and squash both of those horizontal edges down onto one which is obviously not useful because now your polygons have effectively disappeared so it's best to use the second one and it will speed up your workflow a lot more if you're unwrapping this one this one this one and so on and then you just go like bam and now they're all straight and now you can do exactly the same by coming in and selecting the opposite also a cool tip is just press ctrl i and that inverts your selection um, and then you can do the same thing here for the vertical and yeah these are not evenly spaced but for the most part they did a really good job of evening out what what was a jaggedy mess so that's another fast tip um that i like to use speaking of this kind of like jaggedy edge thing you can also use the scale tool um if you hold and select this one it's got uh like a vertical scale and a horizontal scale which means it will only scale on the x or y axis so you can use the i think this is the right one uh yeah you can instead of obviously doing the traditional scale which is all of them um like that which is not useful you can just drag it down onto the x or y and whatever's relevant and drag it like that that's kind of like a slower way of doing that same thing using the align tool so you'll have different uses for each each tool and you'll get used to knowing like what to do with them um Another useful one up here is uh, the free transform. Well, it's not. Uh, yeah, it's called that. It's just like in Photoshop, where you can drag it x and y, and it scales it and moves it at the same or well, at the same time. But it's kind of like a combination of these gizmos up here, all into one. And kind of like I did right at the start of this. Um, Let me just get this back to being somewhat normal. Um, you can see it's getting a bit messy. Um, you can see here, obviously, if you're if you unwrap, unwrap on the default cylinder or whatever it is, looks a bit jank. You can just come in here and grab both the X and Y and scale it to whatever you want and kind of get like a rough square. And for the most part, that'll do like nine times out of ten. Um, 
you'll again like you'll get to know like what you can get away with uh next uh something i kind of maybe should have just done straight away after the stitching is um like breaking your mesh or your uv islands up so obviously you can come in here select these three or whatever you need and do break and now now these have got like a green border which means it's now its own uv island and you can do whatever you want with that it has to be said i don't really know what these guys do um i've never really used them yet uh, i probably should go through and learn what they really do but because some i uh, like the point of all of these buttons is most of the time they do something that you wish and another button would do but you never clicked it to see what it did um but yeah these look like quite advanced tools into in comparison to like the basic kind of stuff we wanted to cover right now uh yeah i mean that's like breaking mesh uh islands up and then the welding is just like and back in here voila the peel tools are peeling is more for peeling organic shapes like peeling an apple i don't know like you can't you can't expect the the planar unwrap to work on a face for example because it, you're only taking a 2d face on version of that face and flattening it down into your 2d view um so that's what the peel and pelting tools are for um they're for more organic shapes i don't know let's make a teapot okay um mm. well okay like just for example you can use the um pelting and peeling tools to unwrap this teapot um it would be quite a weird way to go about it i guess but it would kind of get around this like weird overly shape and also the fact that it's also round um something i should have mentioned already is the display here um these are super useful um and like with regards to going different seams so by default this is what max did um this is max's attempt at unwrapping this teapot um like straight out of the gate but then if you wanted to use the peeling and pelting tools you'll notice that if we come in and start drawing the pelting um peeling seams they're actually represented as blue so if you wanted to unwrap this whole thing using the peel tools you can just uncheck the map it seems which is basically what all of the other tools i've just kind of gone over do and now you'll only be seeing the peel tools um i'm not really that familiar with these first three on here um 
I mainly use the pelt map if I need to because I found that it just like stretches out the mesh like really well um, for the longest time I used to use it on everything until I figured out all of the kind of like default tools and what they do exactly which was a bit of a dumbass move but yeah that's like unwrapping you just learn it over time so I'm I'll just unwrap this main cylinder part just to give an idea of what the uh, pelt tool does anyway so first of all you can like literally just select uh, oh hot tip if you're if you load an unwrap modifier and no seams appear even with these checked then just collapse it and make a new one i'm not really sure why it doesn't work the first time or whatever time it decides not to show anything but your polygons also won't actually appear in the editor um, so just collapse it and restart the modifier and it should work um, but yeah you can just come in and select individual polygons as you go or you can actually use this dot to dot one which you can come in and like select here and then basically select down under here and uh, it will go from wherever you want from point A to point B in the best route it thinks sometimes it's a bit especially on not that you would really unwrap something the way I'm showing it right now but like this horizontal vertical thing it's not not useful for that but basically to get from in here straight down to the bottom saves you often to go through all that clicking uh, now just as an example I can come in and select all of these and you wouldn't you wouldn't need to pelt this bottom face because it can also it can actually just be represented using like the planar because it's just a flat projection you can use these little plus and minuses to shrink your selection just like you can in the polygon edit polygon makes working super fast um, but right now I have this that I just plain are unwrapped and then basically I can select everything else and the, because this is this is its own island now the pelt will only affect the thing you select so I can basically just click this um, the best way to think about this what's going on in here you'll see in a minute but this yellow ring is what is effectively the thing that used to stretch out uh, like wolf uh, tanning that's what it's called it looks a bit gruesome but this is effectively what's going on it's like it's like pulling the edges out and stretching it that's how, how to think about this um, and so the edges all those pieces of wood and these red lines are the strings that are pulling out and it tries its best to pull out evenly um, and you can see in here there's just not enough room and it's not quite the right geometry to make the full use of 
of the whole circular pelt thing, but you will need to use this in combination with the relax tool, um, which you can just like um, just make sure it's on polygon angles and set to like the default and see what it does. Um, here is a horrible mess, but to get around this is quite easy. Um, once you've got to this stage with the pelt tool, if that's what you choose to use, um, you can kind of just close out this relax and commit to the pelt. If you choose to cancel, it'll go back to being that rectangular uh, default max attempt. But now you'll need to commit to it. You can also undo it, it's not like a not like no going back. Um now just come in and reopen the relax tool. You can give it another shot, but the max doesn't really know what to do here. So this is where the amount and stretch values come in, which is what I was talking about earlier, but didn't really have a good example for. You want to be quite uh, quite stingy with this. Sometimes it can go absolutely crazy. I'll show you. Like, oh, well, sure. Sometimes the sometimes the thing just goes like whoop, way out into the middle of nowhere. Um, but you can see the way that it. Um, took that from this this like low attempt to boosting it a little bit and it just edged it out to pull it and like pull the mesh out completely rather than it being all tangled up like it was before. Uh yeah, so that's like the pelt tool. You can see this is kind of like resembling the the face with it's like it's not following vertical and horizontal it's actually curving and uh going with with the topology that it has in the 3d which you'll need to allow it to not look too distorted that's a good point um right now would be a good time to show what's going on in here So the the pelt tool in combination with the relax is attempting to create perfect squares and as little distortion as possible. So you can see right here in the middle, um, basically opposite to this seam, this is the best quality um, unwrap you're going to get out of something like this. Um, character artists might know a bit more about this, but I have to get rid of this kind of distortion up here. But you can see, basically, the further you go around from the middle, the further you come out here in the editor, and the more that these squares start to lose their horizontal, vertical and like conform conform into the horizontal vertical and they start to warp out and stretch into like the arcing shape that it is right now and that's still just max like attempting to get the best quality it can way out here um on this mesh it would be like blindingly obvious that you have a seam here because there's nothing to hide um, this seam. Uh, however, for example, like on the character here, you can see that the seam is actually going right over the top of the head here and back down the back of the head and into the neck. And the reason for this is typically if character's not bald, 
they'll have hair and that will cover this seam which might look quite gross um, if you could see it but being able to cover it up um, is one way of getting around that another is you can see here where the ear is they've actually unwrapped around the back here and the reason for doing that is is no one looks behind the character's ear they're primarily looking at the face um so again they're just like hiding this seam in a in a place no one's ever going to look um and you can get away with that obviously on objects that are not characters or uh whatever kind of thing you're making with even if it's environments um but just for uh i don't know that kind of covers like what the pelt tools does i guess um if you wanted to fix this up real fast and get rid of this distortion an easy way is to go through and select each loop I don't know that there's any fast way of selecting edge loops in, in the editor, but you'll have to go through and double click them. Um, oh. See here we've got like a, a uh, wonky vert. Another cool thing is like, like in the polygon editor, in the edit poly modifier, if you switch between, oh, it didn't work. <laughs> but usually, if you switch between polygon edit, like polygon select, edge select, vert select, it will remember what you just had. But yeah, tough look. I need to go through and select them again. Um, the fastest way to get rid of this kind of distortion quite crudely would be to just come up here and use the align tool just like that like what I did earlier on um, to get rid of to align everything to the horizontal and then if you do control I invert the selection and then get rid of this um, circle which obviously you don't want flattening and then just come in and to the two point vertical align now we can like botch this um this kind of like reasonable unwrap of a weirdly shaped cylinder the only downside to this and pottery is kind of like an awkward one because a lot of pottery is like kind of like um i don't know like bowing out at the side typical of especially greek pottery which is something i'm making and it's a bit of a pain um you'll you'll start to notice this kind of like wobbly edge which can be a problem if you're trying to get like a obviously like a clean straight line down here um not really sure how to fix that exactly but if you were to literally just whack like a seamless material straight on here then you'd never notice um i have something i can show uh, This is like a terracotta material I made, but you can just see it kind of like showing the horizontal bands within the clay that's quite typical of ceramics and that kind of stuff. But then if I turn the wireframe off and say this was just a prop 
in the game you can kind of get away with this wobbly line because it's an organic material and it's also an organic sheep um so yeah i don't really know how to fix the if you were to make this into like a sci-fi pot how you could get clean lines exactly Um, well, in particular with seamless materials, you'll have to potentially like unwrap it and pelt, unwrap it and then uh, create a unique material for it so that the distortion isn't happening on the, like the wobbly line. Uh, anyway, that's a bit of a tangent, but now what? Let's just open this. Oh, the next best things are the arrange tools, which are useful in many situations. We'll just switch back to the cylinder for this, it's easier. Sure. Uh, so, just so I have. Well, okay, like what are these what are these things for? If I have an asset that needs several islands like this, it's got like a, t a top, the cylindrical sides and then the bottom. It's got three different islands going on up in here. Um and if you just like press the pack button, you'll see um it will pack everything into this one, two, uh, zero to one s square, which is the texture that you'd then go on to paint and whatever. Um, um, and the best, literally the best feature of it is that it will take whatever scale objects you have so right now the squares on the top are much smaller than they are on the side uh, on the side of the cylinder which means that the textile density is wrong and if you just select all and then click arrange it will then scale all of them uniformly so this square should technically be the same size as this um, so yeah that's the best feature of this again if you click and hold it it's got settings within here these are different things the linear packing is kind of like explanatory linear means like fine so if you had like a if you had like a load of things going on in here and you do linear packing it will start to al align everything into horizontal lines which is a bit weird i don't really know when you use it and it's not making the most of your texture um so most of the time i just stick with the default settings and also um these different check boxes will do different things so like i was saying if this guy's big and they're all like the wrong wrong sizes um you can come in here to the menu settings and leave rescale clusters yeah so by unchecking that you're like disabling that action which may be relevant to what you're working on say say if you have some text running around the side of the barrel and you want it to be really crisp you want it to be much bigger than these two end pieces that might only use the steel material um, so it's far more valuable to you to have more pixels on the text so that it looks crisp and then you won't want to rescale them to make them uniform because um, it's 
relevant to the work you're doing. Um, but for the most part, you'll want an even texel density. Uh, I will just copy a few of these to show more objects within within it within the editor. Um, right now, after I just copied these, each one has its own un unwrap editor, um, which can be relevant to whatever you're working on. Um, it's up to you whether you collapse them, but you can just come in, select all of them. Cool pip is come into the, like, the little space spanner or wrench icon and do collapse and then do modifier stack collapse selected and it will do everything they selected and it will collapse all of the stacks so that now each one of them has gone back to an editable poly um, but just make sure you know what you're selecting you can also use this collapse tool here to collapse a mesh so these are four individual objects and I can collapse them into one mesh here brought me out of isolated view but now they're all one mesh that can also be very useful but right now I'll leave them individually individual uh, so oh what Okay, so right now these are like just four cylinders, but you can also obviously unwrap multiple objects onto the same texture sheet. So say you're making a kitchen scene and you, you're making a like utensils texture sheet and you've got like a knife, fork, spoon, um, and whatever else. Um, you're not just going to unwrap a fork onto its own texture sheet because that's it's okay to do that in the f when you're first starting out don't worry about textual density and all of that you need to learn how to actually unwrap and texture but when it comes into being more efficient you need to start thinking about how you can pack more of these things onto one Extra sheet so you can make m more use of the space. Um, and you can come in and just select whatever you want, whichever item uh, assets are relevant, and slap a unwrap on all of them. So now each of them have their own unwrap modifier, but technically it's the same one. Um, and you'll see why because. Now, not only do I have like um, yeah, not only do I have this one, I have come on, I have one, two, three, four. Now they're all rocking the same texture sheets and the same with the tops. Right now they just look the same, but if you had look a knife or fork and all of that, uh, you can see where I'm going with this. And again, this makes these packing arrangement tools make it super fast and easy for you to bash multiple assets onto the same texture sheet. And you can obviously quite easily do it just by doing that, pressing the pack custom button and it does a pretty good job um, of making the most of the sheet um, the only problem is things look here and within these empty spaces you're losing pixels that you could be using but that's not really the point I just wanted to show the tool um, if you do have spaces up in like within circles 
between circles. You can just pack them out with smaller assets again. Like whatever's relevant you'll find things you can make use of uh, the space but yeah I mean that's kind of the point of the packing tool there are other ones in here that might be more useful if you have more complex islands than just some cylinders and cubes Squares. Um, uh, yeah, I'm just just remembering what these do. Um, all the things I should be saying. Padding is another relevant thing or setting within both of these um, buttons. Padding is obviously, well not obviously, but it's the distance between this island and this island. Um, and if you set it to 0 0.001 or whatever that was, it's going to be really small. <coughs> or if you set it to, um, if you whack it way up to like 1. Jeez. Maybe not that high, but um, point five. So right now, like shrunk all of these assets down, these islands down, to make room for the point five gap. The reason you would do this is um, your pixels or the resolution of the texture. This isn't really something relevant to think about if you're only just starting unwrapping or modeling, but if you're working on a 4K um, texture, so it's like 4000 by 4000 in both X and Y, you're going to have a lot of room to play with, and you can potentially s like snug these right up close. Because the pixel is only going to represent a small space within here. And this guy will get its own texture and this guy will get its own texture. And they're not going to blend. But if you start working on... Say even this is the textile density. So these check this checkerboard in here. So it's like one... I don't know, it's like 24 by 24 or something. If you start... If you started unwrapping this like this and then adding the cylinder there and you start overlapping these pixels they're going to start sharing the same colors and colors normal maps roughness values and uh yeah it's going to look it's not going to look correct so if you were working on such a low texture or pixel art, for example, you'd need to make sure that they were in their own pixels um, and not merging, otherwise you're gonna have like weird, weird results. But yeah, again, it's not really relevant to think about just yet. Um, They're kind of like resetting it back to how it was. Uh, yeah, this this second one, I kind of find like they do. One sometimes one works, and then other times you'll need to use the other one. Um. But yeah, you'll you'll know when that happens. You can just switch between the two and see how which one works best. But then also, you'll also need to um pack these things sometimes manually so like the computer will only do such a good job like in that UV packing software that you mentioned um, yeah the unwrapping software get, is pretty good now but it's always best to know how to come in and like manually fix things and because 
this is the like, the main thing that uni taught me is just to make sure that you know how to do things manually before jumping ahead into the, these softwares that just do things for you. Um, because although unwrapping is a pain in the ass, it, when a robot starts doing it for you, it's a bit like the uh, self-checkout taking the job of the cashier, you know? It's like getting rid of a few hours that you could be spending actually putting time and effort into into your unwrap if you care so much about it. Um, yeah, so... That's enough rambling about the arrange elements stuff. Um, just wondering if there's anything else relevant. Something that is quite useful and I keep forgetting about is close this, uh, this little button down here. I'm not 100% sure how it works, but basically you can see your 0 to 1 values within these, like, within these input boxes. Um, so you can actually, if you right click and, right, okay, so it's actually aligning on the pivot of this island. Um, so the pivot is in the middle and then I just smashed this to zero and it dragged it all the way to, z to zero on the uh, U and then the V also in zero but you can actually just as an, as an example you can come in and select a particular vert and go zero zero and now this is exactly on the seam like on the zero and one and then this one can be on zero no uh this can one can be on one and then on zero and this one can be on one one and this one can be on one zero what I'm trying to say um, so you can really make sure that these things are accurate um, if you're using something like that terracotta texture you can make sure that um, it will tile very accurately which is relevant on on like man-made materials Uh, next, again like that, um, the buttons in here are just duplicated over, so you can do like plus and minus selections, don't really know, oh uh, what? Cool, I guess these like grow. Let's try it on that pot. So if you select a loop and then just do that. No. Oh right, it just like selects up and down the, the loop that you got. I guess that's cool. I didn't know that was there. Oh, and this is like the grow and shrink ring. Yeah, that is useful. Okay, didn't know that was there either. So like if you were to come in and do that align to make sure everything's aligned into the horizontal and vertical, that's useful. I've never used this. Oh, just another selection tool. 
Um, a lot of these are weird and you probably never use them. A lot of them look like navigation tools, but uh, something that is actually useful. Um, easy to show on, on these repeated cylinders. So right now I'm working on these two. And say you wanted them to share the same UV space. Um, what? Um, say you're like making the same barrel or whatever it is. And both of these are your unwrapped barrels. You can actually come in and like select vertices. Um, select this bottom one. Oh. Well, first of all, I'll show you this. You can use this magnet and it snaps just like the snapping tool in the 3D view, but snapping within the editor. And you can see it will snap the vertices without actually wording to them. It's just basically overlaying. But you can drag the whole island over. And now they're showing the exact same space um, which is, it's super useful. You can see I can drag all of these bottoms and tops onto the same space and now, yeah, you get the idea. Um, that's that. And then I guess the last kind of like relevant things are like up in here. Um, a lot of these drop downs I don't use. Something I kind of got taught in first year of uni was um, showing distortion through this. So if you come up to like display, show edge distortion. This is like a really rough guide and would be more le relevant on something such as the head, like an unwrapping a face. Because there'll be different levels of um, like pressure, if you want to say it like that. Kind of like going on in here. But for the cylinder, it's not so. It's not such an accurate tool. But you can see here it's like it's suggesting that that the tops and bottoms of the cylinder are causing distortion, but yeah, you might find that useful or not. And then like the last real tool I'd say is like rendering the UV template. And this is mm, useful for and painting textures. Um, so if you're wanting to paint your textures in Photoshop or whatever else you may use, um, you can basically uh, drag these out and once you're happy with how your unwrap is, is and you want to start painting it, you can go up to tools, render UV template, and here you can basically render an image. And this is the image, obviously. Um, and you can add loads of customized stuff to it. So you can actually make it 4K, render that. And now, this is a lot crisper than oh what well like the resolution on this is a lot lower than it is on this one you can change that depending on how you want to work. 
it's always a lot of advice to work a lot higher resolution than you intend to actually put into the game. Another thing is you can show overlapping. So if you have two islands that are overlapping, uh, that should have worked. No, no. Well, when I first when I first used this tool, it used to show like a big red blob that these two were overlapping. It can also be useful to make sure even just if you're not actually exporting to Photoshop, um, just to check whether anything in your editor is overlapping because it can cause problems later on. Uh, something cool you can do with this is actually create a mask solid I think yeah so if you change the fill to solid oh here you go um, you can now actually get a mask which is very useful for painting in Photoshop. You can see here it's actually showing the overlapping polygons as well. Um, but yeah, you can take this into Photoshop and like control click this white area and it, it'll create a selected air zone that you can paint within. And so you can not have to worry about painting out sort of outside of the lines if you're hand painting your textures that was I thought the other major use to this render UVs um, I really feel like that's kind of like it well going back to the planar tools down here which were the first things we looked at. The most useful hotkey to have, which isn't in Max by default, is to um, basically assign quick planar to a key that's very close to your like default hand position on the keyboard. Um, you can do that by coming up to customize then into user interface and it can take a little while to load I'm not sure why but then make sure you're in the keyboard tab because that's what you're editing the hotkeys under and come into unwrap uv so these are like all of your modifiers effectively just do unwrap and down in here somewhere yeah, it's quick plain or it's all in alphabetical order so if you assign that i've got it set to g um and it basically allows me to not have to click this obviously every time i want a quick plane or something so if my object's like full of flat surfaces um then having this quick plane or map is makes unwrapping like snappy as hell and you'll never look back at unwrapping in a bad light again i'm sure because you'll just be able to start doing it so fast so i'm going to use like the g key right now but you can see i can just go around and move on to the next polygon or whatever i need and this is like the crucial tip of this probably entire video because it once you know where to use the quick plane R um, it can be very fast and yes you begin to like you'll notice like plane Ring all of this crap in, and then it appearing in your 2D view can be very very messy but all it takes is like Control A in your in your 
uh, editor, press, arrange, and yeah, everything's kind of got, got its own space now. Um, and you can arrange it however you want from here. So, yeah. <laughs> That's not the best tip, honestly. As well as these quick transform tools. They're crucial. Stitching and welding. Oh, another interesting tool is um, this this little one up here. Can be a bit janky sometimes and doesn't always work. But say a bit like earlier on when the mesh can sometimes look a bit like this. If you've quick plane on it, um, you can actually just click this button and it will straighten out the selection. This was a very good result, um, but sometimes it can make your mesh basically go a bit like this. And it's obviously then not useful at all. Um, but yeah, that's kind of like what that does. Never really use these two or others. But. Uh, yeah, from now, like, Really, that's all there is to say. I guess if you're interested in actually editing, moving your objects around on top of a texture, you can come in here and down on this drop down and do pick texture. And I can do bitmap, which is an which is a uh, texture you'll import. Um, I don't know. You can just add, import anything basically. And then I'll start actually unwrapping over the top of this. And I can start aligning thing, your islands to particular uh, things you may have in texture. Uh, yeah well really i think that's that is really on like running dry on things to say oh i guess when you get these you can just save them would have mentioned that earlier but it's pretty self-explanatory um i guess we can take a look at the sword Enemy sword of doom. Uh, two viewers. Well, uh, so the sword, regardless of the quality of the model <laughs> don't mean to sound savage but it needs work and you'll just uh, you'll get better at knowing how to approach modeling obviously it comes with time just as with uh, unwrapping but i'll run over like how you can ah now i come into this i'm really realizing something i didn't cover and I just deleted all that other crap. I'll just quickly show this one tool that is very relevant to the plane art tool uh, when unwrapping. And it's quite crucial to the next part. So we got our wonky cylinder. I'm going to quickly plane all these. And then like I showed earlier, you can go around and stitch all these up if you really wanted. But you can actually just like select the whole lot. Um, all of them, make sure you've got all of them selected. The quick planar is working on a 2D square. 
and is basically representing the unwrap editor but you can also use a projection of a cylinder which can be used to unwrap cylindrical objects very fast and effectively um, first thing to note is like the I don't know I think this is probably called a cage um, the cage will appear wherever you last left it so if you edited something over here with the cage it's likely to be over there so you'll need to come in and just do reset gizmo um, and center if it's necessary resetting just resets it to you to your objects pivot which will give you the best results um, you'll see why in a second and yeah it will def default it to fitting your object obviously this isn't good it's like distorted squares so you can come in and actually just scale this you're going to be scaling the gizmo so you're effectively stretching the 2d viewport if that makes sense so um you're stretching it to kind of like move the polygons in the in the 2d view you kind of get what's going on i don't there's no real good way to explain it um Another important thing to note is that the green line is the seam. Um, so if that's relevant to whatever you're unwrapping, then make sure that's where the seam is. Otherwise, you'll have to edit it manually by coming in and just a quick tip before you edit anything in here, you'll need to uncheck the projections in here because if I try and come in and Oh, he says but if i try and come in and actually manually edit any of this stuff oh it's working now but why hmm. okay usually it doesn't allow me to do anything but yeah just make sure you uncheck this and then come in and use these tools but if you need to move the seam, obviously you'll need to like, if you didn't make sure it was correct using the, using the gizmo, you'll need to like explode this, drag it around and then stitch it, whatever. Uh, the only other thing that's really relevant to this is the fact that Um, you need to make sure that this is actually centered on the object you're unwrapping because if it's way over here it's going to start doing weird stuff where it's not projecting around your object it's actually projecting um, just let me just screenshot this The best way to look at this is what's actually going on here is you're projecting in inwards so it's actually capturing your object like this it's like a 360 camera but kind of like inverted um, and so what's happening right here with the with the cage being off center obviously is it's um you're just getting a big old arrow through through your object and it's not capturing anything over here or here so this is just getting really really warped and distorted in comparison to how it is when you just slap the gizmo right in the middle um, and actually use it there that's kind of like the relevant stuff there are spherical maps but I literally never model anything spherical. 
and the box map unwraps boxes I guess but you can do that so fast with the planar unwrap and probably with more control um yeah just I would stick to these two so like your planar and this cylinder when you need it but moving on so now I've explained that uh now let's talk about the sword Um, the sword handle is obviously relevant because we can use the same uh, cylinder unwrapping technique so you can just like select this ring in the middle press control plus a few times and like, you've got a full selection now you can come in and press cylinder map Um, this one's quite an interesting shape because it's got like a got like a out and then it's coming back in again. So there could potentially be some kind of like warping around here, which you can kind of already see. It's not gonna run exactly straight down your uh like down the length of the handle. Depending on whether you want it to they're the pixels but a lot of the time when you're actually using the cylinder unwrap you don't really need to open the unwrap the editor because you can, you can gauge it pretty well from how the squares are looking on the actual mesh um, The way I usually go about using this tool in this kind of scenario is I would aim to just get the weird ones out of the way. So like these are looking pretty reasonable for squares, but then here you can start seeing this stretching, stretching. So um Yeah, you see here like I'm not able to edit in here. You need to uncheck uncheck the uh cylinder map. First of all, I'd probably after seeing this, I'll just go in and just align everything. Sometimes the cylinder map can uh, cause like weird. like themes going into the mesh itself so want to make sure they're cleaned up and well do and we'll need to run the run this through again now everything is pretty uniform there are some squares in here that are bigger, than, like wider than others, but could give it a shot with this. Like, you see, like this was much better than this. Uh, this result that I got from using the cylinder was much better than using this. So sometimes this this little square button is useless. But now I would just suggest going in and selecting basically you got the lower half of the the handle down here. This row kind of looks okay, but you can adjust it. You can use the uh, the free transform to get an X and Y tra uh, gizmo and now if you actually select the whole lot and move all of them at once 
you can start to make sure you're getting um, all of them moving rather than, rather than just editing like one row if you can move the whole lot yeah I know it might be getting a bit boring but it uh, should be very informative because I wish I'd have known all this shit um, and there you go you've kind of got well kind of got like the uniform squares now these are a bit bigger than these ones but there's not much you can do about it the only thing now would be to go in and fix this like irregularity in the in the like horizontal so they're not like weird spacing You can kind of like eyeball this, as long as they're kind of even. This is, but now all of the squares are not really square. So in this case, you could just come in and grab the whole thing and just square transform, I mean free tran transform, and see if you can just do it better by eye. Now this is pretty good. Uh, with regards to the flatter surfaces, you can quite easily see how you can just come in and control grab all of these press G or quit planar and it instantly projects all of these into the same thing and the same on these I kind of went this over this already before this stream so that's why it's all kind of already done When I'll, I can just grab the sword again. Yes, it doesn't like importing twice. But so let's we grab these pieces out of here out of this mess. Okay. If you wanted to like organize these ones just to make it easier, you can do that. Now it can be relevant to get these to run square and run aligned with the X and Y. So if you wanted to, you can just like grab these and do that same technique. Uh, using the we uh, like the align tools. Uh, again, you're like getting some of this warping, but you're not going to get a horrible jaggedy seam down here, whereas you would on this, because you're going to be running across the pixels here. Whereas on this you're running along them. Um kind of depends how you want the how you're baking and if this had a lot of like intricate work 
something a bit like Viking. You could probably get away with this warping a bit, but again, if you're using a lot of straight lines, it's going to be obvious. Then you'll want to potentially stick with this this curved result, and it is okay to use use uh, non-square islands if it's uh, for the best of the if it gives the best result. Jeez. Next. The tops and the bottoms of or the sides of the sword blade are quite easy. You just select them all. Do a bit plainer. Um Something I didn't really cover earlier, and I should have, is right now the quick planar is kind of doing its own thing on the X and Y. It's not actually running exactly square to the grid. And you can see that because now it's got like these jaggedy edges. Um, and you can fix that by not using the quick planar, but actually using the planar map button here next to the cyl cylinder um yeah i should really have run through this way earlier but here you can using this one you can totally adjust the projection angle the size and all of that just as you were doing in with the cylinder see now can scale up and down and I can rotate so it's starting to really mess with how it's projecting down but if you just reset a lot of the time resets resetting the gizmo will just conform it straight to what you've got selected um, and it will do a reasonable job I, I can't tell. I think maybe this sword tapers in slightly towards the end. Yeah, that's why you're getting some jag, like some jaggedy edges. But that can be fixed, especially along the straighter edge. Don't worry about moving these. These have got to stay curved. Kind of rambling bit um now let's kind of deal with this i'm gonna just edit this model a bit i would say like the way you've got this right now, um, the way you've got these these polygons here is totally fine, but this down in here is like really not necessary. Um, it's gonna like make unwrapping a bit more of a pain, and you're also using a polygon you don't really need to use. So, where I would say to keep it is if it was really making a difference to the geometry, like if it was way up here, um, then I'd keep these polygons because they're potentially affecting the way that the, the shape looks. But the way that they were, and I guess that's how they they are in the original model or concept of this sword. I would just get rid of them because they're going to cause more pain and just actually just merge these polygons down into the sword blade itself and it will make it a lot easier to unwrap and you don't have to worry about those ever again. The best way to get 
rid of them. Just do select what you want. I selected, unselected. And then just come in and grab these. Gives you often to like mess around with the selecting the sword blade as well by accident. Delete these out. And now and hide all. Could just potentially grab the edge, wash it down a bit. That's a bit crude. But you know what I'm getting at? Um, now we can go on to unwrap. We can potentially go like this and plus a selection bit and sometimes You could just get away with doing this, selecting all these top faces, <coughs> and uh, just plain old mapping them. You can also use the the uh, plain old tool here. Make sure you get everything square. You might want to do some relaxing in here to make sure that you're going to be getting the most out of this polygon because right now it's quite squashed. So you could just drag this out a bit, make more room. Um, you'll get used to knowing what you can get away with with regards to this when you start seeing how polygons like this bake. Um, I mean, with in terms of in terms of the way this is modelled, I'd potentially actually think about. I'm now talking about modelling, but I'd maybe just model this. Um, as its own thing. Connect. I know this looks crude, but just for argument's sake. And you can do whatever you want to this, this middle section, and then um, create another part, another separate piece of geometry for this. And then another piece of separate geometry um, for this outer part. And it will make unwrapping this a lot easier than trying to get around all of these, these shapes that are not very easy to flatten down onto a 2D uh, image or texture. But yeah, you'll you'll learn how to do that as as your modeling progresses. But like two hours. Uh, I think I think I'll leave it there. Uh, if there's anything that you want me to talk more about. Or just go over, then uh, let me know. But 
Yeah, I think I've spoken more about unwrapping than I have ever. So that should be useful, hopefully. Um, if you want me to go over any other tools in Max and whatever, then let me know. Yeah, peace out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know, for those one or two who hung around and watched, I don't know. Thanks for watching, I guess. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if that's just me watching my own stream, but yeah, cheers. Uh, have a good evening. I hope you found whatever I had to say useful. Um, if there's anything new, any tips you have for unwrapping, then uh, shout them in the next stream or whatever. Yeah. Cool. I'll go have some dinner. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Yeah, follow me, bitch. <laughs> hey, I need followers. Please follow my Twitch. <laughs>